<laughs> We've had a tough few days. I want to tell you about it. I was so torn up. And, uh, <laughs> celebrating together. Harriet's on her bed over here. We are going to decorate our door. All pretty. <laughs> she just woke up from a nap. No. <laughs> Over there napping. She's had a really good day today and she's eaten three times. I'm so happy. No, no, <laughs> no. You're gonna eat that chicken poo? I'm not gonna let you. Come here. Lay down. She is ready for her dinner. Harriet's snoring over here. Welcome again to our cabin. We've been decorating above the door and hope to finish before it gets too dark, but I wanted to take a break and tell you about Harriet. That Harriet came to the door and um, I noticed she had a big bump on her head. It was the weekend for sure and Anyhow, I kept a very good eye on her, and um, uh, it's been such a blur already that I can't even remember the sequence of events, but, you know, she had this big swollen area and her eye was shut, and what did we do, Willa? We had her in with us and um, just, you know, kept an eye on her. Two days later, the swelling started coming down and her face was, was wet. Obviously there was something uh, draining. So that's when I noticed there was a big wound right under her eye. After it draining, um, the swelling all went down. So this was good news because I was really, well, see what happened was I really thought she was at the end. I thought that whatever happened had really just you know, done her in. And uh, so it's been very emotionally draining and very upsetting for all of us, but um, it's good news now. My suspicion, since I don't really know what happened, is that she hit her head when trying to get up. See, for the past three months, she's been um, having a very hard time getting up from a laying down position. So she's been actually just kind of, sorry, quick, quick. She's been getting leverage by making momentum and I did see her a few times hit her head on the cabin railing um, 
which is no good, but she gets up so much, uh, even through the night, that there's no way I could help her um, every time. Um, you know, I try and help her any time I can, but um, she is on the move all the time, it seems, and uh, I think that she hit her head on something and made a big cut and impact and it I just wanted to tell you um, what happened and um, that she's so much better and she's wearing the cone because as this wound is um, starting to really heal she's it's trying to scratch it it's itching her so she's like rubbing it on even willa she's rubbing her head on everything she passes by so so she can't do that we can't have her doing that so unfortunately she's had to get used to having this big cone on her head i'm just so happy that she's oh she's eating so much i'm so happy she's drinking all the time <laughs> She's doing great. So I am tending to her every minute I can to make sure that she heals and gets on the upswing. So I wanted to tell you a little bit of her backstory too. So I'm gonna go ahead and tend to her for a little bit and then I'll be back and tell you about how I got Harriet and a bit of her story because She's an amazing, an amazing girl. I would love to tell you the story of getting Harriet. Taking her evening nap right now. Two great Pyrenees puppies that day that I visited that goat farm. <laughs> and Harriet was one and Contessa was the other. And those girls were my babies and they grew up with my shepherd Bella, who was a beautiful blonde German shepherd, and Greta, my Greta dog. And Greta was a mix, and Tessa was getting out of the fence a lot. I was on my bike ride and I came home and they were both gone. I got home and Greta was looking at me like, they left again. <laughs> In her dog voice, that's what she told me. And so, that was the last time I saw Tessa, unfortunately. I got a phone call four hours later after I was driving all over the place. Nothing, never saw them. And you know, before when they escaped, well, when Harriet followed Tessa escaping, I could find them. It was awful and for four hours I was looking and then I got a phone call. Tessa had gotten hit and it was just horrible. The next day, Harriet was still missing. She never was found. I had a friend staying over uh, visiting um, and hanging out with me and Greta because we were just, just, just distraught, just really, you know, it was so upsetting and then not being able to find anywhere that Harriet could be. My friend was about to leave and it was midnight, uh, somewhere around midnight, and we walk up to the barn to say goodbye and I couldn't believe it. But this one, she was laying right by the barn door and she was just laying there and like, just like, no big deal. Like, here I am, I'm home. But I, I, you know, of course I was loving on her and just crying. I was crying and in happiness um, and in sadness, but I noticed her paws and I was loving on her. Her paws were all just tender and raw and I think she was really, really tired. And in fact, for three days, she, she didn't walk around much and she just clung close. She was just right there. And um, yeah, any time after that happened, I could open a gate anywhere. She 
never had an interest to go out that gate. She never wanted to leave. And that's the story of Harriet. Um, she's been my big guardian angel, the farm's guardian angel. She, she's a fixture here, very tough and very loving. And she wants to get up now, so I'm gonna let her get the cone off a while and we're gonna eat and I'm gonna get her up so she can go for a walk. But she's doing so good now and I wanted to tell you about her. making a little mess. Mm-hmm. <sighs> 